Hi, this is Eric Smith. I want to start this video by reading a set of verses to you, and then we're going to get right into the video. I want to go to Genesis chapter 6. I want to read verse 5, and the Word of God reads this way. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And then in the same chapter, I want to go to verse 13, and it says, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So in chapter 6 of Genesis, we have the account of a global flood. And we have the account of God telling his man Noah that he would flood the earth. He was basically judging the earth with a global flood. And the reason was because the wickedness of man was great on the earth at that time. And the intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. It was evil continually. And then it says the earth is filled with violence through them. So we have an account here of before the flood that mankind was wicked. They were thinking wicked things and they were doing violent things. And Proverbs 14, 12 and Proverbs 16, 25 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. So sinful man are going to, they're going to do things that are violent. They're going to do things that lead to death, to actual um, killing of one another, or something that would lead to somebody dying, even if it's di it isn't direct murder. And this echoes Romans 6.23, the beginning of that verse says, the wages of sin is death. Now you may be asking, why am I beginning this video this way? Because I want to talk about the recent school shooting that happened last week. I know that there's a lot of people making videos on YouTube and commenting about it. Christians and conservatives alike are talking about this because this was a horrific crime. But as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to look at this situation always through a biblical lens. Um, on Monday, March 27th, in Nashville, Tennessee, a woman named Audrey Hale armed herself with weapons and went to a Christian school and shot and killed six people. Uh, this was a um, Presbyterian Covenant school. It was part of a church. And Audrey Hale actually attended uh, this school and church when uh, she was younger. Um, the people that she killed, three were adults, three were children, including the daughter of the pastor of the church where the school was located. This is a sad thing, and all three children were, were nine years old. This event shocked so many people, and everyone seemed to react to it, and I'm reacting to it as well. Um, but I wanted to wait before I gave my reaction, so to speak. Um, and Christians are always going to react to something like this because these are things that are going on socially and we don't separate social issues from our Christian faith. The question is, how should we view this horrific incident and all of the hoopla surrounding it? And that's what I want to get into in this video. And I'm going to answer that by reading some verses. I'm going to go to Hebrews 4.12. And the word of God reads, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I want you to catch the last part of this verse. It says, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God discerns the thoughts, the intents of man's heart. And again, when we speak of the heart as Christians in the scriptures, it's talking about not the muscle beating in your chest. It's talking about your emotions in connection with your thinking. I want to read uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Again, uh, these are verses that should seem familiar. I've read them in other videos. But again, nothing wrong with reading verses over again. Uh, verses 3 through 5 reads, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. For us as Christians, 
this is a spiritual battle. And you notice in these verses I just read, we're to take into captivity every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That is important as Christians that we do that. That when we see an ideology, a way of thinking, the way that people act, we need to check it against the Word of God and see if what they're doing lines up with the Word of God. We need to see if something is true or not as it pertains to God's Word. Does it match up? We need to be good Bereans like Acts 17:11. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 rightly tells us we are in a spiritual battle and to put on the whole armor of God. This is what we need to do. Philippians 2.15 says we are to shine as lights in this world because we are in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation as Christians. And you know what? As Christians, this is true. We're living in a perverse and wicked generation. It's crooked. It's nasty. And as Christians, we have the truth. Uh, John 17.17 17 says God's word is truth. John 14.6 says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to God the Father except by him. And in John 15, 26, it says, uh, Jesus says, I should say, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, and this spirit does dwell in every believer. So when we examine everything concerning this tragic shooting, understand we are the body of Christ and soldiers of Christ, and we have the truth. And because we have the truth, we need to examine Everything we see about this situation through the lens of truth, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, through the truth of God's word. And I want to tell you something. This shooting by Audrey Hale, I see three dynamics that we need to really pinpoint and we need not to uh, back off in saying what the Bible says about these three things as it pertains to to her breaking into this school and shooting um, these six people. And I want to tell you something. She had weapons. She had automatic weapons. She had a pistol. She shot more than 153 times, according to the news reports, just shooting through the doors and then eventually shooting these people. So here's the three things I want to talk about. And as Christians, we need to look at this situation through this lens. If we don't look at the situation through the lens of scripture in all these categories, we are going to have a wrong way of thinking and we're going to have a wrong way of solving this problem. Because this problem cannot be solved by secular means. And we can't, you know, gravitate to the ways of the world and embrace the ways of the world when it comes to this situation. So the first thing I want to talk about is the sin of murder. The first thing I notice is how the mainstream media, government, scholars, professors, experts, and anyone with an opinion wants to categorize, categorize, analyze, and label the situation to suit their own agenda, whether it's political, social, or personal. It seems like almost everyone wants to use this tragic shooting, or any shooting for that matter, to be honest with you, as a springboard for their soapbox. And I guess even... Um, <clears throat> And I guess everyone has a right to their own opinion, even if it's misguided or wrong. But most of the unbelieving world gets it wrong because they don't rightly say what this is. And even if they do, they don't have an absolute foundation of truth to back it up. This shooting was plain and simple. It was murder. That's exactly what it was. And as Christians, that's how we need to see it. And the whole world wants to say all kinds of things about it. They want to have their own opinions. And as Christians, we need to see it first and foremost as the sin of murder. And it is vitally important that we call it a sin because sin is always first an offense against God. We must call it murder and we must, as Christians, say that it's a sin. I know the unsaved world does not want to hear the biblical definition of sin. And 1 John 3, 4 describes and defi uh, defines sin as the transgression of the law. It's basically saying that people live a life of lawlessness as it pertains to disobeying God's revealed command in scriptures, or his commands in scripture. Romans 3, 23 makes clear all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5, 12 rightly says by one man sin entered into the world. Yes, we need to go there. We need to tell people that sin entered into the world by Adam and Eve. 
Adam sinned, and so now sin is passed on to all mankind. As Christians, we cannot negate that creation account where Adam sinned and now we sin. We can't be embarrassed about that. That's why there's people out there murdering now because they're sinners and they've inherited that from Adam. And Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes excuse me, 720 says there's no one who is just who does good and does not sin. All humans have a nature of sin and therefore will commit sin. We have a nature of sin. It's a noun. That's who we are. But we're also going to commit sin as a verb. And taking of a human life is the sin of murder. We have to say that, that it's a sin of murder. It violates the sixth commandment in Exodus 20, 13. You shall not murder. And Genesis 9, 6 explains why. Because when you murder someone, you take the life of someone made in the image of God. That is why you're not supposed to murder another person. This is forbidden by God, and this Genesis verse says it deserves the death penalty. That's why in Genesis 9, 6, it says you should not uh, murder someone else. If you do, then you should be put to death. The end of Proverbs 6, 17 says God hates hands that shed innocent blood. And I want you to think of those three nine-year-olds that were shot. They're not sinless, but they were innocent. And what I mean by innocent was they didn't deserve to die that way because they committed no noticeable crime where they should be put to death. So they're innocent. Proverbs 1.16 says uh, this about sinners. It says, for their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed blood. That's what they do. And to be honest with you, this is echoed in the New Testament in Romans 3 verses 15 through 18. And I want to read that to you because it really describes what's going on today. And it describes um, what Audrey Hale did and her thinking. It reads, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. These verses in Romans, starting from Romans uh, chapter 3, verses 9 going to 20, talks about everyone that's under sin, Jew and Gentile alike. And this is what they're going to do, and this is what they think. This woman epitomize, epitomizes these verses. She was destructive and miserable and couldn't wait to murder unsuspecting adults and children for her own sick reasons. And since she was killed by police in a blatant, unrepentant act, it's pretty safe to assume she has her place in the eternal lake of fire that Revelation 21, 8 talks about because unbelievers, cowards, and murderers all have their place there. And she was all three. She was. She, she was all three of those things. Now, because of that and because of the way she was killed, it's pretty safe to say that she is suffering that eternal torment of judgment in the lake of fire. Sadly, the world at large wants to spin it for their own agenda. Now, this is what makes this sad. The liberal left wants to make it all about gun control as if weapons force the woman to shoot these people beyond her control. This is something that the left-leaning media does, that progressives and um, liberals will do. They'll say, oh, we need more gun control. Now, I'm not arguing for or against it. There may be a place where we can discuss that, but a gun just does not jump off a shelf, jump into someone's hands and talk to the person and say, you got to go kill someone. No, it's the wicked heart of the person. It's really sad and amusing at the same time how the unsaved world, particularly liberals, are selective about when to be outraged about murder. Now, the reason I say that, oops, I rubbed my eye, is because they get upset about this situation because it suits their agenda. When the BLM protests um, black deaths at the hands of white cops, but say nothing about black on black crime or the large amount of black babies killed in the womb due to abortion, it shows what? It shows hypocrisy. If anyone white shoots someone, particularly a minority, it is either white supremacy, the Proud Boys, the KKK, Christian nationalists, but if it is someone black, LGBTQ, or anyone like that, then it's the gun, not the person that has done that. I want you to think about that. 
listen, they do this. I'm not trying to pick on liberals and progressives and Democrats, but unfortunately, this is the stuff that they say. Think about it. The last two years on ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, all these places, they're showing the riots of January 6th in the Capitol building, and they're calling it an insurrection. And you know, it's okay to say that this is wrong. A Christian is going to tell you it's wrong. A conservative is going to tell you it's wrong. If you break the law, you know what? You need to be arrested, and nobody should be breaking into the Capitol building. But they're blaming it on all these people. They're saying President Trump is the one that's behind it, which, seriously, that's bogus. But when Antifa and BLM were causing riots in dozens of American cities for months, nobody says anything about that. This is hypocrisy. That's why they'll use murder for their own agenda instead of just calling it what it is. But they can't because they're unsaved. If the unsaved world followed God's ordained plan for government to protect us from evildoers, and you find this in Romans 13, 1 through 4, and 1 Peter 2, 14, you'd see a stronger deterrent from murder. Unfortunately, the unbelieving world will embrace a subjective view of murder and other sins as a whole and not understand that it is the matter of the heart. It is a matter of the heart, a matter of the sinful heart. 1 John 3, 15 says, whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. There will be so many opinions why Audrey Hale murdered these six people. They can blame the guns. They can blame the political parties. They can blame her upbringing. But as Christians, we have to know it starts with a sinful heart of hatred. That's exactly what it is. It comes from a sinful, wicked heart. So when we think about the shooting... We're going to hear so much noise. Oh, we need gun control. You know, all this stuff has happened. We have to get the guns off the street so there's no more violence. Or they may even say that this transgender person, because we're going to get into that in just a second, was provoked. But as Christians, we need to go right to the word of God and say, this is a murder. This is a murder. This person was a sinner, this person grabbed guns, and they murdered someone because they had hatred in their heart, period. That's how we need to address what was done. But the second thing I want to talk about is the transgender indoctrination. Let it be said biblically that transgenderism is a lie. I, I have a whole video that I talk about that. It is. There's no such thing as transgenderism. The fact that I'm bringing it up is shows you how crazy this world is, but it's a lie. God made us male and female. We see that in Genesis 127. And this transgenderism is the actual T in the LGBTQ agenda. And the Bible speaks against the sexual immorality of homosexuality. And it does so in Leviticus 18.22, Leviticus 20.13, Romans 1 verses 26 through 27, and 1 Corinthians 6 9. So the Bible has enough verses that speaks against the homosexual agenda and speaks against sexual immorality as a whole. It, it does. The insanity of transgenderism is making people believe they can change their gender based on their own subjective truth, based on how they feel. This is just true. They believe if they feel it and think it, it is. And this movement has come after children teaching and promoting this lie to children as young as four or five years old. You know what? This is just the truth. It's bad enough adults are running around with this insane notion that they can change their gender. Now they want to indoctrinate and teach our children that. And you know what? Children are believing it. That's what they're doing. This is wickedness. So why is the indoctrination of transgenderism so important in the shooting because they have because you know and reports have said it audrey hale identified as a transgender man she is actually a woman but believes she was a man now the fact that i even have to say that shows you how far gone we are in this country and in this world this fact is downplayed by the media because they don't want to connect her heinous act to her insane state of mind 
because you are insane to think you can change genders because you think you can change it. It's insanity. And if you're that insane to think that you can change your gender, then guess what? You're probably going to be insane in other areas as well. In fact, many in the media, mainstream and social, actually want to blame policies against transgenderism for <laughs> driving Audrey Hale to kill others. I've actually seen videos that either say this right out or insinuate it. The basic justification is this. If everyone would just accept the insanity of transgenderism, then transgenders would feel completely accepted and not have to lash out. In other words, the real victims are not the ones that were killed in this school, but the transgenders, including Audrey Hale, because they're so oppressed. In fact, listening to the media, transgenders are the most oppressed group in the world facing violence and persecution above anyone else. This is what's going on. This is the things that I've heard. It is amazing that they took the school shooting, they flipped it on its head, and they made the transgenders the, the, um, the oppressed. Audrey Hale thought she was a guy grabbed a bunch of guns and went into a school and started shooting people for no reason except her own crazy hatred reasons. And yet transgenders are like, oh, the real story is there's violence against transgenders. That's why transgenders are doing this kind of stuff. Because if they weren't hated by the world, we wouldn't have to pick up a gun and kill people. This is the thinking behind it. Yet people identifying as transgender make up less than half a percent of the population in the U.S., this is true. You can look up those numbers on, so, on um, uh, YouTube or on the internet. You can find it. With such a small amount, you would think transgenders were being hunted and killed on a daily basis. you think you would see videos about this all the time where transgenders are getting beat up, hung, shot, killed. Now, I'm not saying people don't harass transgender people, though they're not really transgender. But they're saying that it's the this just this epidemic of people attacking transgenders. And it's the laws against transgenders which is causing someone like Audrey Hale to go into this school and shoot up people. Yet the actual violence deaths are low. They're in the hundreds. But the mainstream media, colleges, and other liberal governing powers want to keep pushing the narrative that transgenderism is virtuous, right, and real. Therefore, those who fight against it are bigoted, hateful, and violent, so transgenders fear for their lives and are, be, are being daily attacked. But again, you do not see this. You do not see that they're being attacked with these great numbers. Let me tell you something. I'm just going to throw out the percentages really quick. People that identify as transgenders make up 0.4% of the population. 0.4%. So if they were getting attacked at such a rapid rate, and there's so many attacks, and yet they only make up 0.4%, you would think that about 75 or 80% of these people were being killed on a daily basis. And yet, even the attacks against transgenders, the numbers over the last two or three years, is as low as as the percentage of transgenders there are in the United States of America. The fact of the matter is all this stuff is a lie. And as Christians, we stand for the truth because one of God's attributes is truth. A lie is contrary to the nature of God. Exodus 20.16 says, You shall not bear uh, false witness. One of the Ten Commandments. Proverbs 6.19, Proverbs 14.5, 19.5, and 21.28 all speak against the uh, false witnesses and lying. And for Christians, for us, Ephesians 4.25 and Colossians 3.9 tells us directly that we shouldn't lie. And Jesus rightly calls the devil the father of lies in John 8.44, as well as a murderer. And going back to Revelation 21.8, not only do murderers have their place in the lake of fire, but also all liars do as well. This is the reason Christians can't give in at all to the lie of transgenderism. It is a wicked, destructive ideology that hurts the very ones being indoctrinated by it. 
I just saw a video. Um, I can't remember her name. I think it's on my phone. Let me see if I can look it up really quick. Um, it's a Christian woman. Um, let's see. If I can find it. Yes. Um, Rosaria Butterfield. Yep, that's her name. I couldn't remember her name. She used to be um, a lesbian, and she got saved by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. But she was still very sympathetic and empathetic to the LGBTQ um, people. And I guess a while back, she said, we should call transgenders by their preferred pronoun. Guess what? She publicly repented of that. Do you know why? Because she looked in scripture and the Holy Spirit of God, by the truth of God's word, pricked her heart to understand that what she was saying was not right. That she couldn't sign off on LGBTQ, particularly transgenders. And she publicly repented because she publicly made that statement. And it was good that she should do that. We are not to sign off on transgenderism as Christians. We can't give an inch to that. It's a lie. It's not true. A man can't become a woman and a woman can't become a man. A little boy can't become a girl and a little girl can't become a boy. This is wickedness. They're mutilating bodies. They're giving them all kinds of medicine to mess up their insides. Once this happens, it completely destroys them on a physical basis, but also on a mental basis as well. They think that they can do this because the world is indoctrinating them and making them think they, they can do this. It's a lie, and it's destroying their lives. Ephesians 4, 17 through 19 are verses that warn Christians about following the ways of the world. And I want to read that because it's a warning for us not to go after the ways of the world and the thinking of the world. Because we're new creatures in Christ. This is what the verses read. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk, and that's a way of living, as the rest of the Gentiles walk. When it says Gentiles, it's talking about the unsaved. In the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Notice what these verses say about the unbeliever. I want you to catch what it says. They live their lives in the futility of their mind. They have futile minds. They can't think straight. Their understanding is darkened. They can't even understand correctly. They can't understand things because their sin nature is kicking in. They are alienated from God. They're ignorant. They have a blind heart. And they give themselves over to lewdness and uncleanness, which means they have no moral restraint. They're impure. They're sexually immoral. And this verse says they're actually greedy. Now, we might think greedy. Think about the medical profession that's making tons of money off of transitioning little boys into girls and little girls into boys. All these pills and procedures, it costs money. So guess what? Somebody's getting paid. They're greedy. All of these things describe the LGBTQ agenda and anyone pushing it. They're irrational, illogical, and they're irresponsible. They want to live in a deviant way while trying to indoctrinate everyone that what they are doing is morally right. They're trying to tell you that they have the moral high ground, that they're morally right. And you know what? They want to justify Audrey Hale's actions while promoting their transgenderism. That's exactly what they want to do. They want to do this so that they can kick their ideology. And what I want to do is I want to take a moment to go over the last just few years, the things we see concerning transgenderism. Christian, you have to understand something. This battle is at your doorstep. They're not going to leave you alone. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. But I want to just go over some things that I've seen, not only in the last few years, but just in the last few months. Transgender ideology has taught children for years, and it has succeeded in indoctrinating young people 
and their parents, and this is a sad thing because parents should know better, into thinking you can really transition from one gender to another. Look at the ex-basketball NBA player Dwayne Wade. Look at his son. Look at the confusion there. And you know what? Um, son, daughter, I can't even remember what his kid originally was. That's how confusing it is. Look at that one school where a boy transitioning into a girl raped girls in their own bathrooms. This happened in one of the northeastern states. I can't remember where it was at uh, now. Um, maybe New Hampshire or Virginia. I'm, I apologize. I don't um, remember what state it was in. But it made all kind of headlines. But the school swept it under the rug. Look at the reality show about it. There's a reality show about a mom that transitioned her kid to another gender. And this show has been running for the longest time. I, I don't watch reality TV show. TV show, so I didn't even know about it until I saw scenes from it, and I'm like, this mom just destroyed their child's life. Listen, as parents, we have a responsibility there. We have a responsibility to bring up our children correctly. That's why for Christians, we're to bring our children up in the Lord. As a Christian father, Ephesians 6, 4 means a lot to me because I'm to bring up my, my kids in the Lord and connect everything to the Lord. And I saw one video, and I'm not even making this up. It was on Michael Knowles' um, podcast. I saw it. We're on TV in Holland. They put a bunch of kids, I think from ages like 10 to 12, sitting down and had a bunch of transgender people get out in front of them, take off their clothes, and answer questions to these kids, indoctrinating them. It was so disgusting, and yet, Pretty soon we're going to see that stuff here because if you can have LGBTQ stuff in our books and schools and things like that, and we can have, you know, drag queen story hour, why wouldn't you put a kid in front of a transgender person and tell them to take their clothes off? Transgenderism has affected women's sports. You can see that and you can see that feminism has come back to bite them because Feminism is a root of some of this garbage, and now they have to face the consequences. You have men identifying as women breaking women's swim records. We see that. Beating women in MMA or wrestling. And being able to just dress and undress with the women in their own locker rooms. Women's sports have been destroyed by transgenderism. And, to be, and just on a side note, listen, these guys that are identifying as women, I just personally think they couldn't make it in the sport they were in whether it's swimming, boxing, whatever. So they decide, hey, I, I'm going to pretend to be a woman, and then I'm going to compete against the women so I can break all these records. It's conceit. It's wickedness. It's narcissism. And it's just disgusting. You don't want to have a man identifying as a woman going in a woman's locker room, taking off his clothes, and showing his private parts to women. He identifies as a woman, but he still is a man. That's how stupid this is. Transgenderism is taught in all forms of education, from colleges to high school to elementary school. The teachers promote and teach it, despite the objections of the parents. Because parents come in and they talk about, hey, I don't want my kids being taught this. I don't want these books in the school. And you can't be a conservative speaker and go to college to speak against this ideology or you'll get threatened, attacked, or censored. If you think I'm making that up, Go look at some podcasts from Matt Walsh, from Michael Knowles, from Ben Shapiro, from Candace Owens. If they're anywhere and they're slated to speak in a college, and that college is pretty progressive and liberal, they're going to get people protesting outside, calling them names. They're going to be yelling and screaming while they're speaking. They're going to try to disrupt it. You know why? Because transgenderism is the new idol for the progressives. They have to sign off on this. This is their God. And the government promotes and backs LGBTQ ideology in their executive orders and declarations. Our president, <laughs> listen, he signed executive orders basically saying men can go into the ladies' room. That, that's what he did. And has transgender people serving in his government. There's one guy, I forget what his um, name is and what his position is. But it's just this, listen, I, I no, I'm going to say it. It's just this ugly guy dressing up like a woman. 
if anybody would have told me 20, 30 years ago that a guy dressing up as a woman and saying he's a woman could get a job in government, they would be like, dude, you're a cross-dresser and you're nuts. But President Biden, hey, I'll appoint this person <laughs> to a, um, a governing position in, in my regime. And guess what? Our president declared March 31st, 2023 as a transgender day of visibility right after this school shooting. How disgusting is this? These six people get killed by a transgender and then on March 31st, he says, oh, it's going to be a transgender day of visibility. And you know what he was doing? He was appeasing the transgender crowd because the transgenders said after the shooting, we're going to have a transgender day of vengeance, so to speak, where they were going to protest and go out and do all these things. And that's exactly what they did. They protested in state capitals. They were disruptive. They were nasty. I saw one video where a bunch of people were laying down like they were, you know, pretending to be dead, you know, kind of mocking the school shooting, saying that transgenders are being attacked. And this is against transgender. They're flipping it on its head. This transgender woman who's actually a woman thinking she's a man, again, it's confusion, shot up six people. And they're making her into the victim and their cause into victimhood. And people are falling for it. As Christians, we need to tell them, you're wicked. It's a lie. You can't change your genders. It's craziness. And now you're being violent. And guess what? I saw an NRP, um, um, or NPR, I'm sorry, National Public Radio um, snippet where they're basically saying transgenders are arming themselves because they think they're going to be attacked. So the liberals want gun control when they think it's white supremacy or they perceive it's white supremacy. But when it's transgenders arming themselves, it's A-OK. -okay. See how this works? And here's the thing. In the suppression of anyone that disagrees with this agenda is supported by the mainstream media. ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, all the liberal media. You know what? They're right in bed with the transgenderism. And they'll get people on their newscasts, their commentaries, to just sign off on it. And they back uh, the Democrats. You never hear about the many testimonies of transgenders who wish they never did it. You don't hear about that, do you? But you know what? Do a YouTube search and you're going to find there's a lot of them. And they're going to tell you the psychological problems they have, the physical problems they have, and how they believe the lie. As Christians, we need to call transgenderism what it is. It's a lie. The whole LGBTQ agenda is against God's standard. And when we talk against it, it can't be our subjective opinion. We need to tell them this is what God says in his word. And that's why this is crazy. That's why I can't call somebody by their preferred pronoun. I don't care what you prefer. That's not who you are. That's not wickedness. That's me telling the truth. As Christians, we're supposed to tell the truth. And you know what? We need to call out transgenderism and these lies and all this other stuff for what they are. Again, going back to what I said before, it's a sin and we need to call it a sin. But let me get to the next thing. Let me get to the third thing. The persecution of Christians. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. 1 John 3.13 says, Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. And 1 Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange, strange thing happened to you. Jesus said the unbelieving world hates him, God the Father, and Christians. And he said this in John 15, 18 through 23. And Romans 8, 7 rightly says the carnal mind is hostile against God. The bottom line in the biblical truth is this. Christians will be persecuted in the world. And let me tell you something. There's always been persecution throughout history. There's been persecution against Christians all over the world. It has always been going on and it's still going on now. For us living in the United States of America, we don't necessarily see this, the type of persecution that we see 
in like a communist country or a Muslim country where people could be thrown in prison or be beheaded or um, have their houses burned down or their churches burned down or lose their jobs and their wages. We don't see that in the United States to the umpteenth power like you see it in other countries. But notice close to us in Canada, it's getting bad and it's going to get bad here as well. So what does this have to do with Audrey Hale? Actually everything. This confused angry woman wrote a manifesto that basically showed this was a premeditated planned out action towards this Christian school. At the time of shooting this video right now, I still don't know the contents of this manifesto, but I am quite sure it has something to do with her embracing transgenderism and the Christian school's opposition towards that lifestyle based on the scriptures. And you know what? I don't know this for a fact, but I, I would bet tons of money that that manifesto has something to do with that. And this makes sense because transgenderism, in fact, the whole LGBTQ agenda has one final enemy, the born-again Christians in the churches that stand on the truth of God's word. They can pressure most of the world to bow to their, to their ide um, ideology. They can. But true Christians can't. They can't bow down because it is opposed to God's absolute standard of truth. Therefore, expect Christian persecution from anyone promoting and living the LGBTQ agenda, particularly transgenderism. If you don't affirm their preferred pronouns, validate the insanity of their, light, their lie and their life, <laughs> and stop speaking the truth, they will come after you. That's exactly what they're going to do. You will be canceled, ridiculed, harassed, beaten, and eventually killed, and they will tell you that they are the victims. And again, I just saw those videos um, about, you know, the people protesting at uh, the Texas State Capitol where they were like lying down like they were dead. They were doing all these things. Um, and you know what? It was sad because they were mocking the deaths of others by the hands of a transgender. <sighs> that really made me sick. Trust me, they are becoming more violent and literally arming themselves to protect themselves from the massive way of persecution that doesn't exist. And though they will attack anyone against them, you will see their ultimate target is going to be Christians. But what does Jesus say about this persecution in Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 and 11? Let's read it. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Did you catch that? The Audrey Hale attack on this Christian school is, not, is just the tip of the iceberg of the violence to come. Dear Christian, I know we don't want to think about losing our homes, being attacked, but it's on the uptick. And this Audrey Hale situation is just the tip of the iceberg. She's just doing what a lot of people want to do already. They want to attack Christians. And what they want to do is make Christians the enemy and transgenders or LGBTQ as a whole as the victims. We can't think we can appease them with even a little compromise because they will still call you a hater or a bigot. Understand that. There are a lot of so-called professed Christians that are trying to appease this agenda. They really are. And they're trying to do it in the name of Christian love. Now, I understand something. God is love. The Bible says that. John 3.16 is about love. Romans 5.8 is about love. You know, you can go to 1 Corinthians 13 and read all about love. But you know what? That love is not talking about the love that some of these uh, progressive Christians and a lot of unsafe people are talking about. This is secular worldly love. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. It rejoices in the truth. And we're to speak the truth in love. I'm not supposed to sign off on something because people think that's what it is when it's a lie. And you know what? I can't worry that I'm going to be persecuted because I'm speaking the truth. I have to expect it. So what are we to do? Well, let me conclude with this. Be a good soldier for Christ. That's the bottom line. 
Yes, it is easy to be fearful and want to hide or to keep quiet, but it actually won't help unless you renounce Christ and agree with their agenda, or if you present an alternative Christ that accepts transgenderism, which some folks are already doing on social media. Again, there's some fake Christians that are basically saying, hey, Christ is, is all good with that. It's a lie. The Bible doesn't say that. But we need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is a spiritual battle, and we need the whole armor of God. Again, going back to Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. We need to be prayerful the way Matthew 6, 8, 8 through 13 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says. We need to be prayerful about this situation. We need to pray for strength for ourselves to stand for the truth. We need to pray for people in that lifestyle that they will repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ so they can be saved. We need to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but expose them like Ephesians 5.11 says. We are salt and light. That's Matthew 5.13-16. We are children of light. That's Ephesians 5.8. We are children of God that shine as lights in this world. Again, that's Philippians 2.15. The world is full of darkness, and the only true light that invades the darkness is us as Christians. We are to speak the truth in love and live holy in this dark world, 1 Peter 1, 13-16. And this means pointing out sin so sinners know their need of the Savior. Our mission is clear. We are to stand for truth as Christians, to shine the light as Christians, and to proclaim the gospel as Christians. And Romans 1, 16 tells us not to be ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. Let me read Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 17. Here are our marching orders. It reads, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, and Greek means Gentiles. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So what are we to do as Christians? We're to live like Christians. We're to think like Christians. We're to proclaim the truth like Christians. We're to give the glorious gospel as Christians. We need to understand that this was murder. We need to understand that transgenderism that drove this murder is a lie. We need to understand that the transgender LGBTQ agenda is just going to be the spark for our persecution here in the United States of America. We need to understand all that from a biblical perspective. And then we need to go out there speak the truth in love, pray to God for strength to do it, and know that we need to give the gospel. I want to end the Romans 6.23, because I read the beginning of that verse, and I want to read the whole thing, because I want to read the end of it too. It reads, For the wages of sin is death. So that's our payment for our sin. We are going to die. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Catch the second part. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ. For the transgender, for the liar, for the murderer, for all these people that are out here doing this wickedness. Listen, they're double-minded like James 1.8 says. They can't even think straight. They have a futile mind. They have a wicked mind. Jeremiah 17, 9 talks about their heart. It's wicked. It's deceitful. But through the glorious gospel and the leading of the Spirit, 
sinners can be saved. They can repent and believe. So how do we look at this situation? In any situation where there's a shooting, any situation where it comes to transgenderism or persecution of the Christian, we should understand it biblically. We should expect it. We should call out sin. We should use the Bible as our foundation. We should ask God for strength through the leading of the Holy Spirit. We should pray about that. And at the end of the day, give the glorious gospel, even though they may reject it, and even though they may hate us more, that is our mission, and that is how we're to live, and that's how we are to look at this particular situation and any situation to come. So I thank you for listening. I thank you for watching. Be prayerful about all this, and may the Lord bless you.